Now, we've heard many emotional accounts of the day from survivors and eyewitnesses, and of course, there will be more to come. Tonight, we've asked our senior correspondent, Adrian Arsenault, to take us through the tragedy moment by moment. You're listening to Ottawa Morning. It's Wednesday, the 18th of September. I'm Robin Bresnahan. Good morning. 6 a.m., the OC Transpo Industrial Garage. This is where and when driver Dave Woodard started his split shift on Route 76. Only supposed to work for a few hours this morning and start back later in the day. In his 40s, fresh from celebrating his wife's birthday the night before. His bus, number 8017. Like this one, it was one of 75 new double-deckers designed to handle big loads. The manufacturer, Alexander Dennis, has never had a problem or recall on the double-deckers. That doesn't mean all the drivers liked driving them, though. OC Transpo Sean Pulley told CBC Today he actually tries to avoid them. I personally try to avoid them because of a uh, chance of high rollover and they're very heavy, very hard to stop. I do know that. I've never driven it with people on it, but I can tell you that bus is heavy, heavier, empty than it, one of these regular 40 footers is loaded. Still, it was an uneventful start. A clear day and a commuter route Woodard knew well. Not far away, another basic morning commute via rail 51, heading from Montreal to Toronto planning on a routine stop right here at Fallowfield Station, a crucial spot for both bus and train. At 8.45 a.m., Romy Gupta boards Dave Woodard's bus at Fallowfield, as she did most days, precisely on time, she said. He was very friendly, not angry, not sleepy, happy, the bus very full. Bus was super, like it was over full. So even I was deciding not to get on the bus because bus was that full. Even I saw people was, they were standing on, like, you know, on the top floor as well. On the top deck, PhD student Eric Nelson wasn't bothered by the speed, but says he and a few others saw lights warning of an incoming train and just expected the bus to break, only it didn't. Until that point, no, no break. It was really, um, it was one of those situations where you're, you're seeing it happening and, and you're, you're thinking, you're also almost assuming that okay, he's, he's going to start pressing the brakes now, he's going to hit the brakes. Uh, and then, of course, when it doesn't happen, all oh, that's, that's when you jump out of your seat and, and you kind of say, hey, uh, stop, or, or as, as just about everybody on the bus did. Gupta heard yelling too. The bus was too fast, and I, I heard people yelling that um, it's too fast, stop. At the very last second, both say they felt what might have been quick braking, but too late. It was 8.50 a.m. Fallowfield and Woodruff, OC Transpo bus versus a train MBC. We're receiving lots of calls for this one. First responders getting the first word. It doesn't take more than a few minutes to realize the gravity of what's happened. Train and bus had hit right here on the level crossing. The train pushing a good 100 meters past the crossing after the crash. Upgrade this to a mass casualty. We have one, two, I have about uh, six code black. I have at least three or four code fours on the ground. As, uh, as stated, we have a two-story bus, but then the bus is missing. The Ottawa hospital immediately declared a code orange, unclear of the extent of what it would face. By all accounts, those morning commuters were incredibly calm. Many reported they had seen the lights on and barrier down, had seen cars stopped alongside the bus lane to let the train pass. From their bus, they said they sometimes do see that typically slow train on their morning commutes and rarely worry about it. Tonight, there are theories in the grief and a timeline with serious gaps to fill. What was happening with Dave Woodard, with the brakes, with the morning light, with the road conditions, with the schedules? Was the train or bus a fraction late or early to drive both to the same place at the same moment? We don't yet know the minute details of a major loss. Adrian Arsenault, CBC News, Toronto.